In this short video, we are going to apply the rules of differentiation. Our first example is we want to find the derivative of this product of two polynomials. We have in parentheses 3x squared plus x minus 5 times in parentheses 9x cubed minus 3x squared. Now we could multiply this out and then just apply the power rule, but we're going to use the uh, product rule here. So remembering the product rule, We have a first function, f, and our second function, g. And the product rule says we'll take the derivative of the first times the second, plus the first times the derivative of the second. So we'll have p prime is f prime g plus f g prime. So let's work that out. P prime of x is going to equal derivative of x, sorry, derivative of f, that will be in parentheses 6x plus 1, times g with no derivative. So I just copy 9x cubed minus 3x squared plus now I just copy f with no derivative 3x squared plus x minus 5 and I multiply that times the derivative of g which is 27x minus 6x and for this example I'm just going to leave that as I've written it. I'm not going to multiply it out and I'm not going to collect the like terms. In our second example, we have a quotient. And here I really don't have uh, very many choices. I really need to use the quotient rule. So again, here we have in the quotient rule, we think of it as having a top and a bottom. And so our derivative remember you take the derivative of the top first times the bottom then you have to subtract off the bottom times oh made a mistake there let me get that in fixed starting from scratch. We take the derivative of the top times the bottom minus the top, no derivative, times the derivative of the bottom. All over the bottom squared. So let's apply that rule. Take the derivative of the top, and I have to put that in parentheses, so I'll have 45 x to the power of 14 minus 10 x to the power of 4. That's the derivative of the top times the bottom, 10 x squared minus 3. Now subtract, just copy the top, 3x to the power of 15 minus 2x to the power of 5 plus 5 times the derivative of the bottom, which is 20x. And that's going to be all over the bottom squared. 10x squared 
minus three quantity squared. And again, at this point, we're not going to make any attempt to simplify this. We're not going to multiply it out or collect like terms. And in general, that's what we're going to do. But sometimes we're going to use the derivative to answer another question, in which case we may have to do some algebra. So here's an example. We want to find the values of x where y equals 2x over quantity 1 plus x squared has a horizontal tangent line. All right, so let's remember horizontal lines, they have a slope of 0. So I want to find x where y prime equals 0. So my strategy will be find y prime, set it equal to 0, solve for x. So let's find y prime. We'll have to use the quotient rule. 2x will be my top. 1 plus x squared will be the bottom. So I start by taking the derivative of the top will just be 2 times the bottom. No derivative taken. Now subtract. Just copy the top and multiply that times the derivative of the bottom. And that will be all over the bottom squared. Now here is a case where I will want to remove parentheses and collect like terms in the numerator. So I'll have 2 plus 2x squared minus 4x squared all over quantity 1 plus x squared squared. And that will equal 2 minus 2x squared all over quantity 1 plus x squared squared. So that's the derivative, but the question asks us something else, and where we're going to have to find where that derivative equals 0. So what I'll do is I will go ahead and set that equal to 0 and solve. So I have to remember some algebra. Um, the, a fraction can only equal 0 when the numerator is 0 and the denominator is not 0. In this case, it's clear that the denominator is never 0. And so all I need to do is solve Two minus two x squared equals zero. So I'll start by factoring a constant two out of the left hand side. In parentheses, I'll have one minus x squared. That will equal zero. And that means I can factor one minus x squared as one plus x times 1 minus x, and that has to equal 0. And that means x equals negative 1. Or x equals 1. So, and that's my solution.
what are the values of x where y has a horizontal tangent line? That curve has a horizontal tangent line when x equals negative 1 or when x equals 1. Example four, we don't have necessarily even a function here. I have a curve, y squared equals x cubed, but that doesn't even represent a function. Plus, we're being asked to find something called an equation of the normal line. Well, what is a normal line? The normal line is the line perpendicular, perpendicular, to the tangent line at the point of tangency. So if I were to try to solve this equation y squared equals x cubed for y, I would get y equals plus or minus radical x cubed. And that is not a function. But we're only interested in what's happening at the point 1 comma 1. And so really what I want to look at is only the positive branch. So I'm going to have a function f of x equals just positive radical x cubed, which I'm going to write with a fractional exponent x raised to the power of 3 halves. So now finding the derivative is simple. Just apply the power rule. So 3 halves x raised to the power of 1 half. And I'd like to know the uh, slope of the tangent line. So I'm going to evaluate that when x equals 1. And that equals three halves. So that is the slope for my tangent line. So I can write down the equation of the tangent line. In point slope form. So I would have y minus 1 equals 3 halves parentheses x minus 1. Now for the normal line, remember that the slopes of perpendicular lines are negative reciprocals of each other. So the slope for the normal line would be negative two-thirds. It's going to pass through the exact same point, one comma one, so I'll use the point slope form again. Yeah, I'll get y minus 1 equals negative 2 thirds parentheses x minus 1. So in our last example, we're going to use the idea of normal line again. Uh, no, not yet. Our next example, we're just going to find the values where these two functions have parallel tangent lines. So that would just mean that their slopes would have to be equal, but it has to be for the same value of x. So let's calculate their derivatives. f prime of x is going to be 6x squared minus 2x. g prime of x is going to be just 2x. If they have parallel tangent lines, 
then that means the slopes have to be the same. And so that would mean we would want to set those derivatives equal to each other. So I'll have 6x squared minus 2x equals 2x and work out some algebra. 6x squared then minus 4x equals 0. Factor out the x. Actually, I can factor out 2x. And I'm left with 3x minus 2 in parentheses. And that product equals 0. And so either x equals 0 or x equals two-thirds. And that would be my solution. Those two values of x, the graphs of these functions have parallel tangent lines. Okay, now in our last example, we are going to have to use this idea of the normal line again. And so let's think about this for a minute. We're going to try to find the value or values of x where the line which is tangent to f of x is parallel to the normal line of g of x. And so here, the derivative of f of x is not going to equal the derivative of g of x. It's going to be the negative reciprocal of the derivative of g of x because we want the uh, normal line to be parallel to the tangent line. So we still need both derivatives. So let's go ahead and calculate f prime of x is just going to be negative 2x plus 4. Now g of x, I'll think of that as being x to the power of 1 half. So g prime of x equals 1 half x to the negative 1 half power, which is 1 over 2 radical x. Now what I'd like is the slope of the normal line, which would be the negative reciprocal. And so that would just be negative 2 radical x. And here, the slope of the tangent line is just negative 2x plus 4. And so we want these two lines to be parallel, so then the slopes would have to be equal to each other. So we're going to set those equal. I'll have negative 2x plus 4 equals negative 2 radical x. So I'll divide everything by negative 2. That would give me a positive x minus 2 equals radical x. I can go ahead and square both sides, x squared minus 4x plus 4 equals x. So that says x squared minus 5x uh, plus 4 equals 0. And factor, I'll have x minus 4 times x minus 1 equals zero, so x equals four, or x equals one. But remember with these radical equations, we always have to go back and check that we didn't introduce any extraneous solutions. So I go back to my original equation, and if I have uh, uh, put one in for x, in the original equation here, then I would get negative one equals 
radical x. So that's when x equals 1. And really, I don't need to say radical x. It means radical 1. But that's a contradiction. I can't have a negative number equal a positive number. So that just means I'm going to have to reject x equals 1. And I, just for sanity's sake, I'll do the substitution when x equals 4. And I'll have 4 minus 2 equals radical 4, which is fine. So the only value of x where the tangent line to f of x equals negative x squared plus 4x is parallel to the normal line for g of x equals radical x is x equals 4. So we'll be doing more uh, videos with examples, but I hope you found these examples useful.